So in this video, I'm going to show you how I make my fruity bra cup tops. So it's a pretty simple pattern. I'd say it's beginner to advanced beginner level and you can play around with what kind of cup you wanna make. So if you wanna make a citrus cup, of course you just change the color like I've done here. And if you wanna make a fruit cup like a watermelon, then you change the color yarns as well as some of the steps, which I'll go over everything during the bra cup portion of the tutorial. So I just wanna note that sizing has not been tested for this pattern. All sizes that I've made have reflected my own size. So I'm an A cup or small B cup. So the bra cups might need some experimentation if you're making a bigger size. I do provide some tips along the way, but just know that you might need to play around with it a little bit to get the size you need. So I'm going to show you how I make this cup exactly. And it has eight rows of double crochet, but see for instance, my orange and my watermelon cup, they actually have nine rows of double crochet. So I'll go over that in the tutorial, but I just wanted to make that clear. And I just wanted to say if you plan on making products and selling them based on this tutorial, please do credit me as the designer because it really means a lot to me if you acknowledge all the work and effort I've put into creating the design as well as putting this tutorial out for you. And if you're interested in more of my work, you can find me on Instagram. I'm most active there um, at Orvaki Designs with a period in between, so orvaki.designs. And you can also find me on TikTok under the same name. I'll link everything below, of course. And yeah, feel free to subscribe here as well. I have some content ideas that I'm working on and I hope to provide more interesting videos on this channel. So if you're interested in content like this, definitely stay tuned. But yeah, with that, let's just get started. To make your fruit top, you'll need weight three cotton yarn in the colors you want your top to be. My yarn is actually weight one yarn and I just double it. So I do two strands of weight one yarn because that tends to be what I have on hand. Of course, you can use whatever colors you want even for a lime top, which I'm doing. I could be using a lighter green for the flesh of the fruit and then a darker green for the peel. So it's really up to you with what kind of color combinations you wanna do. So then for hook size, I use a four millimeter hook, but these are really just recommendations. Your tension will probably be different than mine. And so if you're using weight three and you want a tension that looks kind of similar to mine, you might need to use a 3.5 millimeter hook, for example. But you can really play around and experiment with other yarn weights and hook sizes to see what you like best for your cups. So my gauge with a weight three cotton yarn and a four millimeter hook is about eight centimeters in diameter for eight rows of double crochet. So if you want, you can use a measuring tape to try to match my gauge. So aside from the yarn and the hook. You'll of course need scissors and a darning needle. Now stitch markers and a measuring tape are optional. So this is really just if you wanna match the gauge as I said, and stitch markers are if you like to have that extra assistance for identifying where the top of a stitch is. To start my cup, I make a magic ring with the color yarn I want the center of my cup to be. Since I'm making a citrus cup, or a lime one specifically, I'm starting with the white yarn to form the center of my cup. So to make a magic ring, I just take the yarn and hold it over my two fingers using my thumb to hold the end against my middle finger. And then I just wrap it around my two fingers and cross it in between my pointer and middle finger in an X and then bring it around and then I take the strand that's closest to my knuckle and I pull it under. So now I have my magic ring. And so now I just hold this part of my magic ring with my thumb so that it doesn't come apart and I chain two. And this will begin my first row. 
Now I'm going to continue making six double crochets into my magic ring. So now I'm going to change to my green yarn because I want my center to just be one row. But if you're making a white center and you're making it for a bigger cup, you might wanna make that center bigger so that it's more proportional to the rest of your cup. But since I'm going to change my yarn, I'm just going to pull through once for my double crochet so that I still have two loops left. So I'm just going to take my green yarn and wrap it around my hook like this. And then I'm going to just pull through those two loops. So now you can see that the double crochet is completed in white, but my working loop is green. So now I'm just going to cut my white yarn because I won't be needing it. And then I'm going to hold those ends and turn my work over and chain two. So now I'm going to take those ends and I'm going to work them in my work as I go. So you can see that my first stitch is here. So I'm going to make an increase in that stitch. So my turning chain never counts as a stitch. So now I'm just taking these strands or tails and I'm holding them in between my hook and double crocheting. So now I'm also just going to close my circle a little bit. Now you can see that the semicircle has formed. All right, so as I said, I'm going to increase in every stitch. So I'm going to make another double crochet into that same stitch. And I'm going to repeat this five more times so that I have an increase in all six stitches. So now I've reached my last stitch. So I've made six increases in total and have a total stitch count of 12. So now for my third row, because this is my first row, this is my second. So for my third, I turn over and I chain two. And I make one double crochet into the first stitch and then I make an increase into the next stitch now I repeat this sequence five more times so a total of six times so making one double crochet into one stitch and then into the next stitch, making an increase. So two double crochets into the same stitch. Just like that. So I'm going to repeat this until I reach the end of my row. And so you'll end with one decrease and one increase in the last two stitches. Now I've finished my third row. So I have 18 total stitches. So for my fourth row, I'm going to turn my work over, chain two, and then I'm going to double crochet into the first stitch and then double crochet into the second stitch. And then for my third stitch, I'm going to increase. And I'm going to repeat the sequence five more times, so a total of six times. So you'll always have six increases in each row after your first row. So each row will go up by six stitches for your total stitch count. So the sequence is two double crochet, one increase. So I'm going to continue that, making one double crochet, two double crochet and an increase.
now I finished my fourth row and so I have ended on the sequence so two double crochet and one increase so now for each following row you're going to add one double crochet before your increase so for example this next row my fifth row will be DC 3 increase my sixth row will be DC 4 increase my seventh row will be DC 5 increase and so on so for each row you'll always repeat the sequence a total of six times making six increases and your total stitch count will increase by six every row so for this row as I said I will be doing three double crochet so one two three and then an increase so then I will just repeat that sequence five more times for a total of six times so I do these increasing rows until I like the way my cup is shaping around the widest part of my breast so for me that's row eight which gives me my preferred fit but I'm about an A or B cup, so it works for me to just do these increase rows until I do my normal single crochet rows for my peel, which then make the cup curve around my boob because these are increase rows and the normal single crochet row makes it so it curves. So if you're making a cup to fit larger cup sizes, you might need to make normal double crochet rows before your peel. So those single crochet rows. So basically, if you're finding that making these increase rows to get to your size is ending up making a cup that's too baggy, you should make increase rows only until you reach the broadest part of your breast, like the part before it starts to taper down towards your under bust, and then start making normal double crochet rows instead of rows with the increase. So this cup pattern has not been tested for sizing which is part of the reason why I can offer it as a free tutorial. But I made this version to wrap around this um, ADC size cup, so ADC European or 36C US sizes. And to get the shaping right, I got to eight rows and then I continued with normal rows. So as you can see, it starts tapering down. So if I were to make all of these rows increasing rows it would just keep building out and create a baggy cup so my recommendation is to just keep trying on your cup as you go and adjust your increase in normal rows to get the fit you want just note that when you finish this part of your cup so when I get to row 8 of my cup for me personally um, I'll still be making three rows of single crochet for the peel and that's just how many I do. You can adjust that. And you'll make some rows at the top of your cup as well. So your bra cup shouldn't necessarily fully cover your boob. So as you can see with this bra cup, there's room on top and there's also some room on the bottom for those single crochet rows for the peel. I just finished my increasing rows. So as I said, I have eight and I'm not doing any normal double crochet rows. So I'm going to start my peel with my single crochets. So that means I'm going to change my yarn back to white, but of course change it to whichever color suits the fruit you're doing. So I'm just going to do it exactly the same way. And then I'm going to turn my work over and chain one. And then I'm going to single crochet all around the border and again that turning chain does not count as a stitch so there's my first single crochet and then my second into the next stitch and I'm also just going to take the time now to cut my green yarn so I'm just going to continue single crocheting all along the curved edge of my cup. 
so until this stitch here. Now I've reached the last single crochet of the edge of my cup. So it's in the top of the last double crochet of the row below. And as you can see, my cup is starting to curve. So if you started doing normal double crochets, then your cup should have already started to curve. But now with the normal single crochet row, my cup is going to start shaping around my boob properly. So now that I've done this, I chain two, and then I'm going to single crochet twice into the post of this last row of my cup. And you can also half double crochet if you'd like more coverage. But for me, single crochet works. But for these top rows, feel free to do them in half double crochet so that they're wider and cover more of your boob. So every post, I'm going to make two single crochets, just like I've done here. So I'm going to skip the space in between my rows of double crochet. So you can see right here, I'm not going to make any stitches in there. I'm just gonna go straight into the post and do another two single crochets. And then I'm going to go straight into the post and of course sometimes it'll be a chain. And just single crochet twice. So I'm going to do that until I reach my second row. So I'm going to do it for all my green rows, but not that first uh, center row where I did six double crochets into my magic ring. So when you get to your first row, so that center row of your cup, instead of making two single crochets into the post, you're just going to make one. and then into that center space of your magic ring. So the space right here, I'm just going to pull it a little tighter and pull my hook through and single crochet another. Then I'm going to pull it as tight as I can to close it. And then in the post of the other side of your first row, you're also going to make just a single crochet. So just one single crochet. And then you're going to continue making two single crochets in all the following posts. So two, and then two here as well. And another two, so just all the way down, making two single crochets in each post. Now that I've made two single crochets into the last post of the top edge of my cup, I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of my first single crochet that I made and just pull through to connect. So then I'm going to chain one and just go around the edge with my single crochet or with another row of single crochet again. And you can choose to do this with a different color. I like to make my white two rows wide and then my green one row wide, but you could definitely make your white one row, your green two rows, or really any combination you'd like. But I'm just gonna continue working with white, so I'm not going to change my yarn color. And I'm just going to single crochet all along the edge until I reach the top of the last single crochet from the row below. So this one right here. Now that I've reached the last single crochet on the curved edge of my cup, right before that chain two space from the row below, I'm going to make two single crochets into that chain space. So one, two. And so if you would like help with identifying this single crochet stitch, 
when you do your green border or whichever peel color you are doing then you can definitely just mark that first single crochet you just made into that chain space with a stitch marker. But after I've made those two single crochets into the chain space, I'm going to continue single crocheting or of course half double crocheting if that's what you're doing along the top edge of my cup. Once I've reached the stitch before my next chain two space, which is right here, I will make two single crochets into that chain space again, just like I did on the other side. It's one, two, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of my first single crochet to connect the round, but instead of pulling through, I'm going to actually change my yarn color again because I want my last single crochet row to be green. So before you start that peel row of your cup, I just wanted to make a quick note that if you continue in the round like I show you, then you'll have this edge on top where your middle panel doesn't connect the top of your cup and it just rounds away from it. So I like that little rounding detail, but if you'd like better coverage for your cups, then I definitely recommend that you make your peel a separate row so that you can attach higher up on your cup so that the tops of your cups are better connected. And of course, if you want to do this rounding, then you can still attach the tops of your cup with a chain or you can attach them with a bow. So it's really up to you, but just wanted to make a note that if you'd like better coverage, that you should make this peel row, a separate row where you attach higher on your cup. So for instance, I'd probably attach at that second single crochet in my two single crochet on that chain. So just like that, where my working loop is green. And so I'm just going to chain one and then single crochet all along the edge of the curved part of my cup until I reach the stitch before my stitch marker or the stitch before the first of the single crochets you did in that chain space on the other side. And of course, just like with the other times I've changed the yarn color, I'm just going to cut the one that I am changing from. Now that I've reached the single crochet before the two single crochets in my chain space, as I've marked with my stitch marker, I'm just going to slip stitch into that same space that I made my last single crochet. And then I'm just going to chain one and fasten off. So just like that. And I'm just going to take that stitch marker out. And now I have my finished cup. So to make my second, I'm just going to repeat all of these steps. So to do the detail for the citrus cups, you can either do it using an embroidery method or a slip stitch method. So if you don't wanna use your needle to do all the stitches individually, you can use your hook. And that tends to be what I do because it's faster, but certainly it's a little messier and it'll be messier on the back as well. So you can just decide what you wanna do after seeing both methods. For the slip stitch method, you're just going to take your slip knot without it being around your hook and you're gonna take your hook and put it through the back side of your cup where you want your lines to start and then you're just going to pull it through. Just 
just like that. And then you're going to pull your yarn so that you can work with it and find where you want your first line to go to. So I'm just gonna go to about here, I think. So I'm just going to pull through and now I'm on the back of my cup and you can see I've made a loop there on the back side of my cup and I've made a line here. So I'm just gonna continue doing that, trying to make it as straight as I can. And I'm also going to try to not tighten the slip knots or the slip stitches very much because if you do that then your cup will kind of like condense because slip stitches are not very stretchy so they will uh, limit the give your cup has. So now I'm just going to go in again where I think it'll be a straight line and go back. So if you want your citrus lines to be more prominent, you can of course do the loops on the front, but I personally like them to be the stitch-like look because I think it looks a little more lemon-like. So yeah, so I'm just gonna continue that until the edge, which then I'll show you what I do. So now I finished my last stitch. So you can see I have all my loops on the back side and I'm hitting the white part of my peel. So that's where I want my um, detail to stop. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pull through here and make a chain. So I'm just gonna chain one. And then I'm going to cut my yarn. And pull to tighten. And then I have my finished detail. So if you want to have another stitch going into your white, you can definitely do that. But I like to just have it end there. So I'm going to repeat this. It's the exact same process for all the lines you do. So as you can see here, I've done six lines and that's what I'm going to do on my lime cup as well. So I'm just going to try to attach it in kind of similar placements uh, to this one and in exactly the same way. I'm going to attach it um, in the same way and fasten off in the same way, just changing the placement of where I start and end. So this might take a little trial and error to get your lines to be where you want them to be, but you just have to be a little patient with it and just keep doing it until you're happy with how it looks. All right, so for the embroidery method, which is what I like to do for the watermelon cups, for example, but not my preference for the citrus cup, because as I said, I prefer the slip stitch for that. But what you do is you attach the end of your yarn, which you'll need to cut a designated length. So I just have cut my yarn this long, which I am hoping is enough, but if it's not, then I'll just attach some new yarn to it. But you're going to attach the end of your yarn to the place you want your line to start or your whatever you're doing, whether it be watermelon seeds or the citrus lines. So you're going to attach your end at the back of your piece. So I'm just gonna go into one of the loops here. If I can get my hook through. 
then I'm going to pull my yarn through. So like that. So now I have the ends of my yarn here and I can just make a knot, which I'm going to take this out and do slip stitches for this cup. So I'm just going to tie it once instead of actually making a proper knot. So once you have your knot, you're going to take your needle and you're going to place it wherever you want the line to start or really end. So just like that and I've pulled it all the way through and so now I'm just going to go back into that space where I attached the arm and I'm going to pull all the way through to create that stitch. And so now for the next one, since I have placed my yarn in at the top of that stitch, I'm going to go into the space at the bottom of the stitch once again. So, and then I'm just gonna pull through. And then I'm going to go into the next space where I want the stitch to go and pull through. And depending on where you're pulling through, it can be a little more difficult, which is, you know, a positive that your, your needle spinner, so it can go into more places on your um, stitches, making for more precise line work, but so now I'm going to go into the space here since my end, so the end of my stitch is on this side. So if I go back up in that space, it'll just pull the yarn out. So you always want to work at the end that you have not gone through yet. So, and then I'm gonna go into the, into that same space. So I would just continue like this until I have the slice line or whatever you would call it to, until I have finished it. So until I'm here and then I basically just on the back of my work, take my yarn over here so that there will be like here, I can show you how it would look here. I would basically just go into here so that there's a long stitch on the back side. Like that. And then I could just continue working on this side now. It's a little longer than the slip knots, but it is a little more precise. You can go into more places of your stitches than you can with the hook. And it's definitely what I prefer for watermelon seeds. So for watermelon seeds, you basically do the same thing. You just spread them out more. So I could make a seed here, for instance, like that. And then I could go make a seed here. Mm, let's go here. So it's definitely what I like to do for those little kinds of seeds, but it's not my preference for the citrus cups but you can do whichever one you prefer. I'm just saying what I prefer, so. Hope that helps, and I guess I should also just touch on fastening off. Basically to fasten off, you just kind of knot it. So I would maybe go through here, and then take my yarn through, but hold the little loop. And then I would just take my needle through and I would just do that twice where I pull through and just make a knot, just like you would for embroidery if you know how to embroider. So that's really it. I'm going to just do the slip stitches on this, so I'll undo all that. But for the watermelon cups, you can see here that I have just done all of the stitches. You can see on the back side versus the front side. 
So that is definitely my preferred method for those little seeds. So I hope that helps. All right, so now I'm going to go over how to attach your cups and you can choose how you want to attach them um, because for instance, for the orange top I made, I did two normal rows and then I started increasing at the start and end of each row all the way down until I reached the bottom of my cup. So that creates a cup that's closer together and going at a different angle than with my lemon top, for instance, where I've done four normal rows and then started increasing at the end of each row rather than at the start and end. So you can see that there is a difference in how the cups look. So you can really just choose whichever one you wanna do, but for this top, I'm going to do something similar to the lemon top. To start, I'm just going to do a slip knot and I'm going to attach my yarn in the first single crochet of the border on my left cup. So this is the right side when worn of my left cup. So I'm just going to put it through there and do a slip stitch. So if you're attaching your yarn with a knot, you would just do that instead. But I'm just doing it like this. And so I'm going to then chain the width I want between my cups. So I'm going to chain six. So two, four, six. And that's gonna be the distance I want my cups to be apart. And then I'm going to take my right cup and making sure that my chain isn't turned. I'm going to put my hook through the front of that first single crochet on this side. And I'm going to slip stitch. And so after this, I'm just going to chain one and then I'm going to go into the next single crochet on that cup and do another slip stitch. So then making sure my chain is flat across. So as you can see, it's flat, it isn't twisted at all. I'm just going to single crochet down the row. So I'll have six single crochets at the end. Now I have my six single crochets, so two, four, six, and I'm just going to slip stitch into the next single crochet on this cup. And so now before you move on, try on your cup to see how you actually like that distance. And of course, if your cups are sitting too far apart, then shorten the length of your chain. And if they're sitting too close, then lengthen it. But it's really gonna be up to you to adjust for sizing. So once you've checked for fit, you're going to adjust and then move on from this point. So I'm going to chain one, and then in the next single crochet on my cup, I'm going to make another slip stitch. Now I'm going to turn my work over and I'm going to single crochet all the way down the row. So I'll have six single crochet in this row as well. Now for this side, instead of just slip stitching into the next stitch, the next single crochet on my cup, I'm going to turn my work over 
and I'm going to insert my hook through the front of my cup to do the slip stitch. Now this is optional, I just find that I like the way it looks better, but you can definitely just do it from the back if that's easier for you. So I slip stitch and then chain one, and then make another slip stitch in that next single crochet on my cup. So just like that. And then I just do this two more times. So for two more rows, so that I have four normal rows total. All right, so I've just finished my four normal single crochet rows. So I'm going to start increasing at the end of my rows now. So I've already slip stitched and I'm just going to chain one and then slip stitch into that next single crochet and then I'm going to single crochet until one stitch remains. So now I have five single crochets because I started with six of course and so in my sixth stitch I'm going to increase so I'm going to make two single crochets. Just like that. All right, and then I'm just going to continue the process of slip stitching and chaining one and slip stitching again. And then turn my work over and a single crochet until one stitch remains. Now in that last stitch again, I am going to increase, making two single crochets. And then I'm just going to flip my work over and continue with the same process where I just increase at the end of each row. After doing my slip stitch and chain one slip stitch. And so I'm going to do this until I reach basically the bottom of my cup and I'm going to make sure to end on an even row so that I have two increases balancing out each other. So if I ended here on my fifth row, for example, it would look a little asymmetrical. So by doing two rows, so any even amount really of your increase rows, you're going to kind of balance out that asymmetry. So I'm going to do this until I reach the bottom of my cup, as I said, on an even row so that my work is ending on this side. I've just completed my increasing rows. So I have 18 total rows of single crochet for my cups. So now I am basically at the bottom so you can see when I stretch my cup, it's going to be relatively aligned. So now I'm going to just chain one to fasten off. So I've made my slip stitch into that single crochet on my cup, but instead of slip stitching into the next stitch, I'm just chaining one and fastening off. So now I'm going to start on this side. So for this side, in order to have the rows going in the same direction so that on when I'm working this side, I can just turn my work over and then stitch all the way across, I'm going to start this side separately. So instead of attaching it to the cup, I'm just going to chain after making my slip knot. And so for this, you're just going to chain whatever length you want for the coverage you want for your back. So I generally just chain to reach kind of my shoulder blade. So just check your chain like when it's stretched 
So just hold your cups up to your body and kind of just check when your chain is stretched, how far it goes uh, to your back. So I'm just gonna chain, let's see how many do I have now? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. So I think that'll be fine for me. So I'm just gonna do 19. And then when you've gotten to the last stitch to get the length you want, what you're gonna do is find that single crochet. So here's my slip stitch where I ended my border or my peel. And I'm gonna go into the top of the single crochet that's right next to it. And I'm just going to slip stitch. So just like that. And then I'm going to chain one and slip stitch. So now I'm ready to start my single crochets into my chains. So I'm just going to go into my first chain and single crochet. So now that I've made my first single crochet, I'm just gonna continue single crocheting down my foundation chain. So that I end up with 19 single crochets. So now I've done my 19 single crochets. So that will be however many single crochets you chained. And I'm going to turn my work over and chain one and then single crochet down. And the chain is never gonna count as a first stitch, just like with the other parts of the pattern. Now I've done my second row, so I still have 19 single crochets. It's just a normal row. And just like with the middle section, I'm going to turn my work over so that I can slip stitch into the front of the cup and then I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into the next stitch of the cup and then I'm just going to make some more single crochet rows to match my middle section so here I started increasing at the fifth row. So since the fifth row is going to mean that I increase at the end, and of course I don't wanna increase at the end, I'm just making a straight line here. So it's just going straight up. So I'll actually be making five regular rows on this side to match the middle. So even though I made four normal, four normal rows here, I'm going to make five technically here because that fifth row won't count since the increase is on the side going away from the cup when it's on this side. So your normal rows will always be one more than what you did on your middle panel. So I'm just going to make these normal rows until I have five. So I've just finished my fifth normal row and I'm going to just chain one, like I've already turned my work over and then I'm going to single crochet until one stitch remains. So I've just reached the second to last stitch. So I only have one stitch remaining and in that stitch, I'm going to start my increases. So now I'm going to increase every time I reach the side of the cup when I'm ending a row. So I'm just going to slip stitch just like I have been doing and chain one 
and slip stitch into that next single crochet. And then this will just be a normal row. So every time I'm working away from the cup, it's a normal row. And every time I'm working towards the cup, I'm going to increase at the end of my row. So you're just gonna alternate with these increase, normal, increase rows. And you're gonna do this until you reach the same row count as your middle panel. So I'm going to do this until I have 18 total rows. So I finished my 18 rows now, a single crochet to match my middle panel. And so I've done the increase in my last row since it's going to be, since it's a row that's towards the bra cup. So then just like with the middle panel, I just finish off by slip stitching into the next single crochet on the cup and then just chaining one and fastening off. So I just cut my yarn and pull it through. So it should look like this. So you can see when I pull it, the cup is almost in line. So now I'm going to start working on my other side and I'm going to do the exact same number of stitches. So I'm going to chain the exact same amount but for this one, I am going to attach it to the bra cup. So I'll attach it at the first single crochet on this side. And then I just make a slip stitch. And so just like with all the other ones, if you just want to attach with a knot, that's totally fine. Now I've chained 19, which is exactly the same that I chained on the other side. So I am just going to then chain one extra since I need a turning chain on this side and then single crochet from the second chain from the hook. I've just finished my 19 stitches. So my 19 single crochets. So when I get to the end, I'm going to just do exactly the same process of slip stitching to the cup and then chaining one and slip stitching to the next stitch above and then turning my work over and just single crocheting across that row. And so to match my middle panel, I'll be doing four normal rows again. So since my fifth row is going to increase at the end, that's going to be the same here. So I'll just do normal rows until my fourth row. So now I've just completed my fourth row. So that'll, that will be the last of my normal rows. So for this row, I'm going to turn my work over chain one and then I'm going to single crochet until one stitch remains. So now I've reached the second to last stitch of my fifth row. So one stitch remains right here and I'm just going to increase in that row. So again, just make two single crochets. So just like with the middle panel, how in the fifth row, the increase starts. So then just slip stitch into that next single crochet on the bra cup and chain one and then slip stitch into the one above that one. And then this will be a normal row going back. And so it's just going to be pretty comparable to the other side where it's going to be alternating increase normal rows. So it'll be an increase every time you get to your bra cup, but then when you're working away from your bra cup, it's a normal row. So I'm just gonna do this until I have 18 rows to match my middle and side panel. So I've just finished my 18th row on this side panel. So I have the same amount of rows as in my middle panel and my other side panel. And 
your rows might be different of course because it's just going to be however many rows it takes to get to the bottom of your cup. So now instead of fastening off on this side, you're just gonna turn your work over. So turn it over and chain one and then single crochet until you get to the bottom of your cup. So you're gonna single crochet until you get to your last stitch of your side panel. So now I've reached my last single crochet on my side panel and I'm at my bra cup now. So to go along my bra cup, I'm going to do another single crochet in that stitch of my bra cup. So here's my side panel, here's my cup, and it's going to be the same stitch that you made your last slip stitch in. So as you can see, I'm going right through here. I'm just single crocheting. And now I'm just going to do slip stitches. So I'm going to do loose slip stitches so that I can actually stitch into the stitches easily when I go back along my cup, when I'm building up the next row. So if you have tight tension like me, you should definitely make sure you're making these loose. So I'm just making slip stitches all the way down on the edge of my cup until I have one stitch left before the stitch that I've slip stitched the last middle panel row into, so this stitch right here. So now I have one stitch left before that stitch that I've made my last slip stitch into. And so for this, I'm going to do a single crochet and now for the other side, I'm just going to single crochet into the top of the last stitch from my middle panel. So here's the slip stitch where I fastened off. So instead of stitching into the same stitch where I've done the slip stitch, like on the other side, I'm just going to go into the first stitch of my middle panel and I'm just going to take the tail of my middle panel so that I can weave it in as I stitch. So it'll look like this. And if you've stopped at a different row um, than mine, you might need to make more single crochets so that your cup is basically in line with your panels, but I only have to make one to make it pretty flat. So now I'm just going to single crochet all along the bottom of my middle panel and repeat the same steps for this cup. Now I've completed my first row connecting the cups, so building up the bottom and I'm just going to chain one after turning my work over and single crochet along the entire edge of that row, including into the slip stitches. So I've just finished my single crochets and I'm about to start stitching into the slip stitches at the bottom of my cup. So, you just go through the top of your slip stitch, just like that, and single crochet. And you just do this along the tops of all your slip stitches. So now I've completed that row of single crochet, and as you can see, my cups are now fully integrated with my middle panel and my side panels. And so I'm just going to keep building with single crochet rows until I reach the length that I want my top to be. I've finished all my rows to get to the length that I want. So I've done 16 rows of single crochet now. And that's the length that I want. So I've just fastened off 
as you can see. So now I'm going to do the border for the corset so that I can put my lace up detail through. So to create the border on the edge of my side panel, I'm just going to grab the yarn that I want to use. So I'm going to do my border in green. And I'm just going to make a slip knot. And then like I have been doing, I'm going to attach using a slip stitch. So I'm just going to put my hook through that first row of single crochet on my side panel. So just the side of that right there. And I'm going to slip stitch. And pull my slip knot tight. Then I'm just going to chain one. And I'm going to start half double crocheting into the edge. So I'm going to half double crochet into the next space. So here you can see where I've attached the yarn, of course, and then I'm going to half double crochet into this next space right here. So right here, just like that, half double crochet. And your turning chain will still not count as your stitch, even though you have it in a different space. You're still not going to half double crochet back on it. And so then I'm going to go into the next space, which is right here. So it's in between my two single crochets. So as you can see, this is one single crochet row and this is another. So that's space right in between. I'm just going to half double crochet into that. And then I'm going to go into the next space, which is right here. So it's also kind of on the edge, but also in between the rows. I'm just going to go right in there. And I'm just going to continue this until I have five half double crochets. I have five half double crochets after going into the edges of the single crochet rows. So now what I'm going to do is actually skip the next space. So this is just to make it so that the stitches are the same width as your single crochet rows. I just find that it helps because if I crochet into each space, then it bunches up a little bit because these stitches are a little bit longer than the rows. So I just skip this space right here. So for the other stitches we've gone in, but now I'm just going to go into the next space. And then I'm going to make five half double crochets in total again, going into each space. And then I'm going to once again skip that space. And so I'm just going to do that all the way until I reach the end of my row. And of course you can do this in any stitch you want. I'm just doing it in half double crochet, but feel free to do your border in double crochet, single crochet, whatever you want. I'm at the last row of my single crochet on my side panel now. And so instead of making my last half double crochet in this space, I'm actually just going to make one into the top of that first single crochet in my row. So just right there. And you don't really have to do this, but I'm going to because I like that it is more on the edge. And so once you've done this row, you can of course stop here if you just want your border to be one row long. Uh, this will give you enough room to put your chain for your corset into because you're just going to put it through the posts of your half double crochet or double crochet, whichever one you want to do. But I'm going to build up some more rows by just turning my work over, chaining two for my turning chain, and then going into that first stitch with my half double crochet. 
and then continuing to half double crochet down the row. So I'm going to do this for a total of three rows, I think. So either three or five, I'm going to end on an odd row since I've started by attaching on the front. So I want the front side of my stitch to face the front side of my work, which is why I'm going to do an odd number of rows. So I've now completed my three rows of half double crochet because that's what I decided to do. So of course, as I said, you can do as many as you want, but I'm just doing three. So I just fastened off and now I'm going to start on the other side. So just like with this side, I'm going to take my yarn and do and make a slip knot. And then I'm going to attach in the direction so that my stitch will be facing the front of my work. And I'm just going to attach at the top of that last single crochet of my row. So just like that. And then I'm going to chain one and tighten my slip knot a little bit. And then I'm going to go into the next space, which is right here. And I'm going to just half double crochet. And then I'm going to continue in all the spaces, just like the last time. But what I'm going to do is actually see on my other side where I needed to skip. So here I can see I had three or four stitches after I skipped. So here was my fifth stitch and I skipped. So I'm just going to make four half double crochet and then skip. And then I'll continue making the five half double crochet. Now I have four, I'm going to skip that space right there. But now I'm going to start making five half double crochets again before my skip. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I reach the end of my row. All right, so now I've reached my last row. And so unlike with the other side, I'm not going to do an extra half double crochet into this last space where my slip knot is. So I'm just going to leave it at this. I have 29 stitches on this side and 29 stitches on this side. So they're even. So now I'm just going to make more rows of half double crochet. So until I have three, just like my other one. So I'm just going to turn my work over, chain two and half double crochet down the row. So it's exactly the same process as with the other side. And the turning chain does not count as a stitch still. All right, so I'm now completed both of the edges on my side panels so that I can start making my corset tie. So to do that, I'm just going to take the yarn that I want the tie to be. So I'm gonna do my white yarn and I'm just going to chain by making a slip knot, of course. I'm just going to chain the length that I want my lace-up tie to be. So I'm just going to make a simple chain, but you can, of course, slip stitch back down once you have the length you want, if you want it to look a little more polished, but I'm just gonna make a single chain because I like the look of it and it's easy. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue this until I have the length I need to do my full lace up back. All right, so now I've finished chaining the length I need. So what I like to do is basically when I think I've gotten to a good length, I just start weaving in my end with my slip knot. 
so that I can actually try on my top. So I just basically mark that working yarn with a stitch marker so it doesn't unravel. And then I just try it on to make sure it fits. And so now that I've tried it on, I've also placed some stitch markers where I want my straps to be. So you can pick wherever you want your straps to be. It can be further inwards, it could be further outwards, but I'm going to go for this placement right here, which is pretty close to my armpit. So first I'm going to just cut my arm to fasten off for my chain since I like the length it's at. And then I'll just pull through and pull tight to secure that chain. And you should have a little bit of extra on your chain because when you fasten it, it will pull down quite a bit. So I've lost a few chains. All right, so to attach my strap, I'm going to take my yarn and attach in my usual method. Just making a slip knot and I'm gonna go into the stitch that I marked with my stitch marker. And just slip stitch. So now I'm just going to chain the length that I want my strap to be and it's going to be a non-adjustable strap. I'm just going to attach it to the back, but you could definitely do a tie strap by just chaining the length you need to be able to tie it at the top and then going back down. So it would just be like, if you're doing single crochet like I am, you just have your turning chain of one. So from the second chain from the hook, you just single crochet and go back down so that you have a strap that can be tied. But you can choose whatever you wanna do. There's a lot of freedom in this. Like I'm very intuitive with my crocheting, so just do whichever you feel. But what I'm feeling right now is just doing a chain and then single crocheting back down it for a non-adjustable strap. All right, so I've just chained 53 now. So I'm gonna see how I like the fit of that. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that my chain isn't twisted at all and slip stitch into the back of my top where I want my strap to be. So I'm going to slip stitch here and I'm going in through the front of my work. And so then I'm just going to chain one and put a stitch marker in that loop so that I can try my top on without it unraveling. All right, so I've just tried my top on, so I like the length of my strap, so I'm not going to add or subtract any chains. And so now what I'm going to do is, after that chain one, because I'm doing single crochet, I'm just going to go into roughly the next space of my top. So I'm just gonna go in here. and I'm going to slip stitch. So this just allows for some room for the single crochet because the single crochet is a certain width, so you need to kind of account for that when going back up. So it's just like a turning chain, but it's slip stitched down to the edge. And so now I'm just going to single crochet all the way up. So if you're doing any stitches other than single crochet, you might need to do a turning chain of two. So for instance, with half double crochet, um, I'd probably still just do a turning chain of one and then slip stitch to the stitch directly next to where I've slip stitched first. But for a double crochet, for instance, I might want to skip a space and then stitch into here with my slip stitch after chaining two. So it's really just about accounting for the width of your stitch. So I'm just going to continue with my single crochets until I reach the end of my chain. 
All right, so now I've reached the end of my chain. So I've made my last single crochet into that first chain that I made. And I'm going to just slip stitch into the stitch right next to where I attached that yarn. So just like that. And then I'm just going to chain one and my yarn is already short. So I'm just going to pull through to fasten off. So you can, of course, instead of fastening off right away, try on for fit again to make sure you like how it fits and adjust as necessary. That is definitely the best practice. So I do recommend you do that. All right, so now that I have tried my top on again to make sure that I like how my strap fits, I am going to start on the other one. So I'm going to get my yarn and attach in the same way into this space right here where I want my strap to start. So it's going to be symmetrical with the other side since it's also using these two last stitches. When I come back down on my chain, I'm going to be slip stitching here. So it's going to use those two stitches again. And why I'm attaching on the back this time is so that the tops of my stitches are facing the same direction. So I want the tops of my stitches to be going this direction to match this strap. So now I'm just going to chain the exact same amount that I chained for my first strap. All right, so now I've chained 53, which is the same that I chained for my first strap. So what I'm going to do is go into that stitch that I marked with my stitch marker for my strap. And I'm going to go in through the front and slip stitch. And of course, make sure your chain isn't twisted. And then I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into that next stitch. So just like that. And then I'm going to start single crocheting down my chain again. All right, so I've reached my last single crochet at the end of my chain. So just like with the other strap, sorry, it's a little awkward to hold this uh, yarn. It's a little short. So I am just going to find the top of the next stitch. So that's just gonna be right here. So the stitch right beside where you attach the yarn. And I'm just going to slip stitch and fasten off. And that completes the second strap. So now all you have to do is weave in your ends and then you have a finished top. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry if some parts of it were a little bit shaky or off camera. I'm definitely still getting used to making tutorials like this. So please bear with me. I hope that it was helpful in any case. And if you make this top and post it on social media, please tag me. I'd love to see your creations and if you make it to sell it, please credit me as the designer to acknowledge all the effort and time that went into creating the design as well as filming this tutorial to release it for you guys. So that's really it. I'm just gonna weave in my ends now and then yeah, I'll have a finished lime top to add to my collection. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching again. And yeah, subscribe if you are interested in more content like this. I have some other ideas for tutorials and other types of content on this YouTube channel. So 
I hope you'll stick around for them.